With all the different ways to pay for things, whether online or in person, making safe transactions can sometimes feel like spinning the wheel and hoping for the best. When it comes to our money, we don't want to feel like we're throwing caution to the wind. Schools First Federal Credit Union is here to help us figure out safer approaches for making secure transitions. Let's welcome Travis Mara, the Roseville branch manager for Schools First Federal Credit Union. Hey, Travis. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Okay, so we've got a ton of ways to pay these days from online, in person, even our phones are used as an option. So break it down for us and tell us which options are the best for keeping our money safe because yeah. we want to do that. <laughs> Just like you said, I mean, there are so many convenient ways nowadays to make these payments. Each have their own you know key benefits uh, security considerations uh, so you know kind of you know digging into some of the more popular options mm -hmm. uh, right off the bat you have kind of the mobile wallet uh, these apps allow you to store all your debit and credit cards and make payments right from your smartphones your smart watches mm -hmm. or other devices uh, another common one is the peer-to-peer -peer, uh, apps this is where you send money directly. Uh, this is very helpful for, you know, if I'm splitting bills after restaurants, if I need to pay my rent or sending money to family and friends. And then we have the good old uh, traditional, your debit and credit cards, the most common electronic forms of payments. With credit cards, you're able to borrow up to a approved limit. With debit cards, that money comes directly out of that uh, uh, linked bank account. Yeah, so like you mentioned, so many options. So let's kind of break mm -hmm. down some of them, starting with mobile wallets. The first one you mentioned, super convenient. What's the lowdown on using them, and should we give them a try? Yeah, you know, the beauty of them is they basically act as like a virtual copy of your physical wallet, storing all of your cards right there on your phone. And so the key kind of benefit of it is convenience. You mm -hmm. know, you are able to make all your payments without needing that physical card. Mm -hmm. So if I'm shopping online, in person, or even on apps, I don't gotta dig through my wallet and see where is that. I yeah. can just pay directly through the phone. Yeah. Uh, so that makes you know checkout so much easier. Mm -hmm. You know, we're always uh, you don't want to be that person in line holding, holding up the line. line. Yeah, no. exactly. <laughs> uh, the other thing is a lot of the mobile apps allow you to transfer directly to mm -hmm. family or friends. So that makes it super easy again for splitting those bills that are all going out, as well as for gifts. Uh, security, on the other hand, is a, another huge uh, benefit of it. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's much more secure than traditional other payments. So instead of having to swipe my card mm -hmm. at a you know cash register, where potentially my card information or my mm -hmm. account information could be intercepted by hackers, mm -hmm. uh, mobile wallets use what's called tokenization, mm -hmm. where a unique n random number is assigned, kind of a token, and that fills in for the physical card. So mm -hmm. even if that transaction were to be compromised, mm -hmm. they don't have access to your actual physical account information. Uh, on top of that, you know, you can set up a pin, face recognition, or fingerprint, which is an added layer of protection, which we're all looking for, should your phone get in the wrong hands. Yes, and that's always helpful, too, because I'm someone sometimes, I'm like at the yeah. grocery store, I realize I forgot my wallet, uh -huh. but if I have the mobile wallet, it's right a win-win situation. I got my phone. You're, so you're all <laughs> I always set. have all you my need. phone. No, yes. You lose the phone, different story. Yes, different story. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so speaking of ease of use and security, how about peer-to-peer -peer or P2P transaction apps? Yeah, that's, a, you know, very similar to the the mobile app. It mm -hmm. is a way of transferring funds from a linked, you know, bank account or a debit or credit account. You know, most of these P2P apps, you know, the funds are transferred immediately. However, some of those apps can take one to three days for the recipient to receive it. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing with that is there's generally no fees for these transactions. However, if you do want that money immediately, you may uh, pay some small processing fees. Mm -hmm. You know, so that makes these apps very convenient, perfect for sending uh, funds to fr people we know, friends, family, even your babysitter. Yeah. However, other transactions may not be the right fit for it. That would be if we are purchasing goods, services from either a vendor or people we may not know. Mm -hmm. You may not want to use it because you don't have all the protections that some other payment options yeah. have. So should you come into an incident, a dispute, or an unauthorized transaction, you may have a very difficult time yeah. getting that funds back, which is why we recommend linking a credit card uh, to kind of to those apps, mm -hmm. just because that's an added layer of protection. Credit card companies can help you dispute unauthorized charges, which yeah. is uh, very important in getting yes. your money back.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you want to make sure you're sending it to the right person. Because I've exactly. actually have sent money to the wrong person, same name. For sure. But this yeah, is where things get a little dicey. So not look, so easy to get it back. Yeah. Hit send. It's yes. Gone. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to make sure you're, yeah. you know, <laughs> checking everything. Um, okay. So credit and debit cards, oldies but goodies. What do we need to watch out for to make sure we're using them safely? Yeah, you know, with debit cards, it's one of the few things I can relate to my kids that I used when I was their age. <laughs> uh, but you know, they are very convenient for transactions instead of having to pay cash. But to your point, we want to be very mindful when using the PIN. That's mm -hmm. the personal identification number on it. Uh, why we say that is if someone were to gain access to your card information or your PIN, they technically can drain your account uh, balance. Now, banks will work with you to get those funds back, but that could be a very timely uh, process. Yeah. So as a tip, we recommend not using your PIN unless you are getting cash back mm. from a merchant. For example, if I was to get gas, I would use the credit option okay. instead of the debit. Uh, in case you know or don't know, but gas stations are a main target for skimming devices mm -hmm. looking to steal that information. So it's a great way of kind of protecting yourself. Yeah. On the flip side with credit cards, uh, they are considered a little more secure because it's not linked directly to a bank account. Uh, you know, in the U.S., credit cards use uh, chip technology, which is another layer to kind of prevent fraud. If you should have fraud on a credit card, you know, you're not uh, responsible for unauthorized charges. Mm -hmm. However, if you were to lose or have your card stolen, you may be liable up to $50 for charges up mm -hmm. until you report it. So that's why it is very, very important if you lose it or it's stolen, report that immediately. Yeah. Okay. Got to take those immediate yeah. actions. Good to know. Any last minute advice to keep our transactions safe and happy? Yeah. You know, <laughs> as you started, I mean, it's the sign of the times. You know, we are changing. We are relying more on electronic means, technology. Yes. And so with that, you know, we want to make sure we're using strong passwords. You know, mm -hmm. Password no longer is a strong password, uh, things of that nature. And we also want to kind of regularly change our passwords. The other yeah. thing is just be aware of what's going on with your accounts, whether you're looking at your mobile app or definitely checking your credit card statements, bank statements. Mm -hmm. You want to know what's coming in and out to stop any of those unauthorized activities. Yeah. You know, when we do give our card information so easily, some people share that with others. Mm -hmm. And the last thing is, you know, we use a lot of like hotspots and we're in public Wi-Fi networks and we want to be mindful when we're making these payments that yeah. those are not as secure and a lot of the hackers are out there uh, trying to get, gather that information. Yeah. And as always, you know, for more information, visit us on our website at schoolsfirstfcu.org. Here we go. Keeping us safe, Travis. Thank you. Thank Always you. a pleasure. Yeah, my pleasure. <laughs> All right. To our viewers, you can visit one of the many Schools First Federal Credit Union branch locations as seen on the screen. And you can find out more online, like Travis mentioned, by going to schoolsfirstfcu.org.